Hey everyone, and welcome to Fort Malthus. So, on my channel, um, week, week and a half ago, I decided that I wanted to show you guys what it's like to actually, like, download something, extract it, and build all of it in G2Box. So, I've, I've wanted to, like, do a little house, so I found this nice little merchant's house. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and download it, I already got it. So, uh, this is on Cults 3D, and... It's by Code 2. So we went ahead and downloaded it. It's right here. And I just have mine set up to be its own little desktop folder. Uh, and it's got all my stuff in it. So anything that I've already printed is already in here. And then I have all of my like Warhammer, Stargate, Minecraft, alternate prints is like this, where it doesn't quite fit into any sort of category. So I was going to do this bakery, but it's just a little too big. So you're going to download it, move it from your downloads folder to wherever you want to store it. I, like I said, just have a desktop file. Uh, so then all you're going to do is you're going to extract it. It's going to give you the file like this. We're going to see how many pieces it comes in. And looks like this one has three pieces. So we won't be able to print all three of them in one go. But what we can do is get a sense of the size of the print. So it looks like it's, here, move this out of the way. This is my Mars, uh, my Elegoo Mars 3 build plate. As you can see, these are probably intended for um, filament printing uh, for D&D &D and stuff like that. But I just wanted to have like a nice little, you know, model that I could paint and have on my desk. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to select all, we're going to go to scale, we're going to do uh, 60%. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a scale, oh, I'm going to move this, hold on. We're going to try to find a scale where all three pieces fit into the build plate with some wiggle room. Now another thing we're going to do, and this will increase the build time, is we're going to make them like this. You see how... Uh, so, okay. If you wanted the fastest build possible, what you would do is you would build it straight on the build plate like this. Okay? But when you're using an FDM printer, a uh, filament printer, it's easy to build on the build plate because the build plates are usually flexible. However, with resin printing, it's not. This is going to be a steel plate, and this is going to be a solid chunk of plastic that's very brittle, depending on... I use um, uh, eco resin, and the problem with eco resin is it is fairly brittle uh, on thin parts. So it's good for a whole host of reasons, but honestly, like, if I was building stuff for my kids, it would be out of, uh, you know, a much more durable version. But anyway, so the fastest would be to do it just like this, maybe raise it up a couple of millimeters and put a raft under the bottom of it. That would probably work. However, anytime you have a big flat surface, I highly recommend rotating it at least to a 30 degree angle. Because what that'll do is it won't give, how do I explain this? Basically, it vacuum forms onto the build plate. And so if you have a big flat surface, your build plate and your resin pool will vacuum form to each other and can cause tearing. It can cause deform uh, deformations or it can cause under saturation or under uh, curing with your UV. So if you do something like this, it only has to cure a little bit as it goes, but it does take, you know, twice as long because every layer just adds another three seconds to it. Uh, it's still going to be something you just like turn on in the middle of the night and, or, you know, turn on before bed. And when you wake up, it's done. You know, it's not like it's going to be a big deal. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just something to think about. You know, if you're, if you have the money to buy extra resin, if it fails, then why not try it, right? Um, so just for this piece, 
we're going to look at it. We're going to see on the bottom it looks okay. Nothing looks like it's getting cut off. Uh, as you can see, it does have a little bit sticking out. We're going to go ahead and scale this to 55%. Okay, everything looks like it's, and the nice thing about Chi2Box is it's got this nice, like, shadow here. So technically it shows you, like, like an outline uh, for exactly where it's going to fall. So that's probably good for right now. So what we're going to do, this is part A. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and unselect everything else, and we're going to delete it. We're going to do this up. Uh, another thing, when you're doing your supports... You want to do your supports in a way that they're going to hide the connectivity. So I don't want to flip this over and have all the supports be on this side because when I go and clip these off after it's done printing, it'll leave dimples or it could depending on the material you're printing with. Uh, and so what that can do is it can kind of mar up the detail. Now for something like this, it would probably just blend in. And honestly, I, I just kind of roll with it. You know, I do a lot of orc stuff, so it just kind of blends in as battle damage. But what's cool is when we do this, we do medium, because this is a fairly heavy print. We're going to do medium. We're just going to do plus platform. And as you can see, what it's done is it's put a ton on, like, this facade up here and everything. But it really hasn't done much up here. That's okay. Generally, I'd like for all the supports to be up on the back. Where I, uh, you know, because this will be the very bottom, um, and I can literally just like sand it off, <laughs> or or you know, buff it out. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure it'll be fine. This is gonna be. I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna use my good paint on this one, um, because it's a house. It's kind of what craft paint is made for. Uh, what we are gonna do though is because it's so heavy, we're gonna do some cascading supports like this just to give it some back support and all that's going to do is as it gets heavier and as it builds what it'll do is it'll keep it from detaching because the last thing you want is to put in something for a five hour print or an eight hour print and come back and it's just floating in your resin pool hasn't happened to me personally yet but god forbid you know I'm working on a sh shoestring budget here, so. Anyway, we're going to go back. We have our supports in place. We're going to give it a nice quick look over. <laughs> this is real weird. It's coming through the window. But, I mean, whatever, right? Um, we're going to give it a look-see. Everything looks okay. I don't think we need to add any extra supports. I don't see any overhangs that aren't supported. Except for right here. But I'm guessing it's going to be building off this pillar. So it builds upside down. So it'll build this first. Yeah, it'll be fine. Because it's going to build down to, into this pillar. I'm guessing it's supporting this because it's a freestanding pillar. This one's connected to a wall. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and leave it like this. We've got our extras that we just added. Okay. We're going to go into... Sl oh. So, like, if you go here, this is what, this is the maximum size I can print. So, this is only going to be, like, four inches wide, three inches, three inches wide. It's going to be a very small house, it'll be a nice little desk piece. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be small. Uh, for my eco resin, I'll show you what settings I use, just so you have them. ba ba, -ba. 0.05 millimeter. Now I do this because that's pretty much standard for all the free prints I use. Uh, I use five bottom layers, 45 seconds, and I will say the eco resin seems to take longer. So if you're using if you're using like first generation resin or the newest stuff that's not made of eco friendly stuff, it's going to cure faster and you'll get your prints done faster. But you are going to get a little bit of a headache from the fumes. So, that's just a trade-off you're going to have. So, we'll go in here. We'll hit Slice. And we'll look for Islands. Now, unless I find some really... Oh, an Island is an internal or 
external unsupported space that could cause an issue. Uh, so, like, if you have something with a ton of design, like filigree and, and stuff on it, and it doesn't have any support to it, that's what would be an island. Something that could become detached or won't have enough detail because it doesn't have the ability to, uh, doesn't have the ability to, like, structure itself. All of those islands would need supports, however, if they're internal, there's really nothing you can do. So, what we're going to do is we're going to detect all the islands on this piece, and then we are going to look at them, and we're going to see if there's anything that's really bad, we might go in and, and redo our supports, but usually you can just ignore it. Um, and unless you're doing something very complicated, which this house is not, so, obviously we got a lot. Let's see what we got. So we'll just find a couple. Um, we have something right there. This little guy. Okay, so he's just like part of the pillar. Ah, stupid thing. G2 box is not perfect. Yeah, so it's like some little interior, interior uh, fragmenting on like the lip of the wall. That's going to be fine. This one's the stairs. Stairs might come out a little wonky. We won't be able to support them unless we flip the thing. I really don't want to do that unless I have to. Interior wall, lip. Yeah, it just seems to be the, the, the in, in like, individual stone, as you can see, seems to be a problem, but I think it'll be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this one. And, uh, hold on, before we do that, always a good, if anything, anytime you've scaled something and it's more than one part, I highly recommend you go back in here, you double check the percentage you've scaled it to, because if you're not careful, it will, um, you know, you won't be able to tell. Because once it saves, I'm doing hand gestures, you can't see. Once you save it, unless you write like 55 or something on there, so like, uh, we're going to go to my alternate prints, and we're going to go house, part one right uh a i guess that's what they call it and then we're going to do 55 for 55 percent so that way we print all three pieces in 55 percent they'll all match together so we save it it'll write it up and uh all 3d printers come with a usb drive i just use my standard one uh, it's currently in my room. I'm printing off uh, an Orc War boss to go with my other guy. Or he's a he's a knob in heavy armor with a little gob on top of him. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then I'm also working on a giant. It it's Raptor Jesus riding a T Rex. It's from uh, Sigmar. We'll see how it turns out. I just I found it and it's got a giant T Rex that I'm printing it out. So my three-year-old son has something cool to look at and probably break. But anyway, so we've done this one. This is house part one, a 55. Okay. We have one third of our stuff done now, but the other two are going to be the exact same. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this out. We are going to open up B. We're going to go ahead and scale to 55. And it's very similar. Already fits. We're going to go ahead and rotate this boy. And if we look at the shadow, everything fits. Trapdoor fits. Now on this one, what we could do because it does have a lot of like very small stuff so we could do this and 
it would be a little weird because it would be putting supports on all of the stuff. But it would also be giving us the largest amount of um, detail. And another thing, when it comes to having this be on the bottom, it's the heaviest part. So if it's on the bottom, it'll print first, which means it's going to be carrying that weight the whole time. So let's try it like this. All of our settings automatically saved. So they'll all be the same. Uh, we're going to go over here. It's going to take a second. My computer's not great. So you got to got to wait a minute. Technically, I won a computer on, on Twitter uh, for a company named Vast. I don't know if I'm going to get it. That is a shitload of supports, man. But it's those stupid windows and stuff. I mean, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, okay. So it's basically this thatch thing that they're doing on the floor or the, the rough wood. It's reading as like individual pieces, which obviously is causing some issues. Um, I think in just this one time, I'm going to remove all. Uh, we're going to go to light, and then we're going to do it again. Uh, normally, I don't do light because I, you know, I do everything I can to possibly prevent stuff just falling into the resin. So we're going to use light just to save on some resin because, I mean, look how many supports we have. I don't think, I mean, Thor couldn't break this. So that looks fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and slice it. Okay, everything looks good. We'll go ahead and check for islands, but damn, I don't think there's going to be any. And if there are, there's something <laughs> we can't add more supports. Uh, I will say, if this turns out really cool, but very small, I might have my friend Andrew, uh, the guy who did all the art for my channel, he, I, I kind of got him into 3D printing now. Um, he, he just got a uh, filament printer because he wants to make, like, toys for his kid that aren't going to break and stuff like that. He's less into painting and more into, like, invention type stuff. So what, what he did was uh, he got a filament printer, and he's been printing off all sorts of stupid stuff. Um, but, yeah. So if, if I like this design, I might have him print it out and we can show off the differences between a resin print and a filament print of the exact same files. So might be cool. Does take a little while, especially with all these supports, because it has to check every single layer. Very few. Very few. Uh, and it's going to be internal stuff. Yeah, I'm not even worried about this. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and save it. This is... House Part 2... B55. And we're going to save it in alternate prints. Once you get going, you know, it's not so bad. I do like to find ones, uh, if you've seen my tech marine that I just made, uh, he comes as one, like one printing piece. And it, it it's kind of nice to have one. But the problem is, if you want to print something really big, like that plane that I made, uh, and it doesn't come in parts, it's impossible to print it on a resin printer unless you go into Blender and break it up yourself. And I don't have those skills. So instead, I look for stuff that has... Uh, Multiple parts, not too many. I'm, I, I was looking at a um, a dreadnought. It was an orc modified dreadnought, and it had like it. What it was was, I believe, it was a direct rip of um, a orc kit bash from like a a uh, like official model. And the problem with that is it. They had a picture of basically. Uh, the entire sprue kit. And, you know, it's, I got enough, I gotta clean everything, and I, it's so easy to lose small pieces. 
that I would just rather find one that's one piece. Anyway, this one's going to be rather easy. What we're going to do um, is we are going to rotate it. Just We're going to rock it just a little bit. We're going to move it. Everything's in. Uh, it, it's the only one that doesn't have a solid bottom, but it's got a solid top. So what we're going to do is we just rocked it a little bit to keep it from having any flat surfaces. And everything should be fine. We're going to go back in here. We're going to move it back to medium. And we're going to do a platform. Still a ton of uh, supports, but you know what? That's fine. It's supporting an entire raft up here, so nah, I'm not going to fight it. Everything looks fine. I'm going to put one little dude here just to make sure his little horn works because I like the little horns. And we are going to go backwards. We're going to slice. We are going to save. Actually, I get, we'll detect for islands. There shouldn't be any, it's hollow. But yeah, so uh, if you do get a 3D printer, a resin printer, and you have any questions, just leave them on my channel. Uh, I'm trying to get into Reddit, but there's a ton of people already doing it that have more experience than me. But if you ever see anything in one of my videos, or like you see a print that you want to make yourself, hit me up. Uh, I can give you my Cults and Thingiverse account name, and you can literally just go look and see everything I've ever downloaded. Um, which is a lot of stuff. A lot of really good and bad stuff. But bad is in like didn't work, not like naughty. Got two little kids, can't, can't be having that stuff around. So, we're detecting islands. You can do it, computer. You can do it. So yeah, coming up on the channel, uh, we're going to be having quite a bit of painting. I just got a painting handle. Pretty excited about it. It'll let me work on my Dead Space Marine without smudging off the paint. Okay, it's just that interior. Is it the lip? Sorry, hold on. Beep. You know, not going to let me do that. Problem is, is it such a small area? Yeah, it's just the interior. It should be fine. Weird that it's not reading as having islands there, but it's got it marked as an island. I'm not worried about it. House part three C fifty five. So here's what we're gonna do. This is how I've done it. It is documented, it is recorded, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to print directly from these files, and you will see, I will, even if it fails, I will record it. Um, and that way, we all learn. You know, I'm not going to, there's no reason for me to hide it from you. It's good content if I fail, right? Everyone loves failure. Um, it uses resin no matter what, so just keep an eye out. Uh, I don't know when I'll be making it, but... It should be relatively soon. Because my printer is in my office, I can't print during the week usually uh, because, you know, then I'd be sitting next to my 3D printer while I'm trying to work for Social Security and it's not going to work so great. So, yeah. Anyway, make sure you guys are safe when you're printing. Use gloves. Use goggles. Wash everything off when you're done with I uh, IPA. And I hope you have a great time. And welcome back to the fort. Later, guys.